Today we're going to take a look at utilizing KML data import with RADMAP. As a reminder, RADMAP is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and RAD controls for WPF suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we'll do a quick run through setting up a RADMAP, and then we'll see what it takes to actually load KML data into that RADMAP instance. Finally, we'll take advantage of some of the data we have in that KML file and add a colorizer to RADMAP to show some population differences within the data that we're using. Stepping into Visual Studio, I took advantage of the Telerik Visual Studio extensions that already added my Telerik Windows controls, data visualization, as well as data assemblies, so that's all set. I also went into my KML.web project and added a data sources folder with USA Simplify.xml. This will be all the data that we need to load our shapes and other requisite information, so it takes care of everything. We just have to show how to load it into RADMAP. So of course, the first step getting into my XAML will be to add a Telerik RADMAP instance. So Telerik RADMAP next name is X rad map close this up and we'll see in a second the designer will update and we do in fact have a rad map you can see the different elements right down here that are utilized within rad map but right now they're not quite doing much of course once we have a rad map we want to next add a provider so we can say Telerik rad map dot provider in this case we want to do is a Telerik empty provider this is because we're loading in data manually so we don't want to utilize a provider instead we want to be able to tell rad map hey, load this data from this file and set up a really nice display for it. Of course, if you're going to be doing this, you are going to need an information layer. So we'll say Telerik information layer. Give it a name. X information layer. And now that's all set. We can actually save this real quick. Jump into code. And on our loaded event, now here we want to be able to take our KML file, which has all the data that we need, and load it into RADMAP. To do this, we're going to need two things. First up, a map shape reader. Quickly add the namespace for that. MSR equals brand new map shape reader. And the map shape reader dot source is going to be a new URI. And this URI is going to point at where we're actually getting our data from. So in looking at our KML web project, looking at the data sources folder and then we want to say USA simplified to XML and of course we want to set our URI kind to relative since that is a relative URI. Last but certainly not least X information layer dot reader equals that map shape reader. Do a quick save run this Internet Explorer and we'll see what we got for loading our KML file. Now this is looking a tiny bit weird We'll first zoom in on this and then we'll go back and make a few modifications to actually make this a little more usable of a map. But we can see we're definitely already loading our map shape information in and we're getting this default pop up. So move over in North Dakota, move over Wyoming. Pretty interesting. But where is this information actually coming from? Because we didn't set a tooltip, we didn't set any templating. Well, two quick things to show you. First up, if we go back into our project, We'll actually open up this data sources, USA Simplified, and we'll see some interesting data in here. If we start at the top, we have a style default style. This is what's going to let RADMAP know exactly how you want to colorize things from the get go. And then we have this little thing called the balloon style. And here we can actually see some pretty familiar information where we're using different parameters. So we can see perimeter, month admitted, area, state, year admitted, all this information, as well as how is this going to be displayed. Now if we scroll down, we can actually see, scroll a little too far, Alabama, we have our perimeter, we have all our different data. If we scroll down a little bit farther, we'll be able to see this linear ring with all these coordinates for where the state is actually falling. So all this data is actually packed into this file as well as that whole balloon format. So we don't have to worry about any of this, we get it for free just by using this USA Simplified file. We can showcase our visualization a little bit better based on something we have in data. And one thing that we definitely have within our data is population. So let's go ahead and use that in our information layer to make this map a little more interesting to look at. Now, first thing I want to do within my information layer, we're going to say Telerik information layer dot colorizer. Now our colorizer is going to be a Telerik color measure scale. You can see that popping up in the IntelliSense. We need to add the extended property name, and this will be a handy population. And we also want to set the mode. And here we can let it handle itself and do auto, do count. I want to do ranges because I know we're going from different ranges and want to do kind of a heat map kind of setup. Now within our 
Telerik color measure scale, and we'll move down a little bit and make more room for code. We want to say Telerik color measure scale dot shape fill collection. And here we're going to do a Telerik map shape fill. Now, the three things we want to set here are fill, stroke, and stroke thickness. And this is just for the effect that we're getting of the visuals. So fill, we can start at a very bland white. Stroke will also be white. And stroke thickness will be two. We want to add another Telerik map shape fill. Make our fill equal to red. Stroke will again be white. And stroke thickness will once more be two. So we have our color measure scale that's going on population. We need some ranges and we create a shape fill collection with the two basically beginning and ending ranges of what the colors will be displayed as. Well, after our shape fill collection, we're going to need a Telerik color measure scale dot range collection. Now the range collection is what's actually going to enable us to say from this range to this range, this is one basically region. From this range to the next range, it's another region. So it's a very quick and easy way, especially if you have some idea of the scope of your data, to add this colorization effect to your RadMap instance. Now I've gone ahead and just pasted in a bunch of ranges. You can see going from zero up to a million, from a million to five million, and on, on, on. So we now have a bunch of ranges going along with our colorizer. So once again, running this project and loading up Internet Explorer, as opposed to that kind of blue with just a little bit of state information that we were seeing, we should now see this colorized to kind of that heat map effect. Well, zooming in here, we can see we now have everything going. So by population, we can see exactly what's going on here. We can tell that Vermont, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, they're actually a little sparse, as you would expect. California, Texas, Florida, New York have a lot of people, but we now have a much better view on our map. Now, of course, you're saying every time I load this up, we start in this really odd place. Wouldn't it be much more convenient, since we're just looking at the United States, to be able to start our map up and actually start somewhere relevant to where the United States is in, you know, the entire global projection? Well, two easy properties will help us with that. Paste them in real quick. Zoom level is going to say I want to be at the fourth zoom level. You'll see exactly where that puts us. And center is going to say where the physical center of the map will be with latitude and longitude coordinate. If I go and run with these brand new values, we're going to see a slightly different display right off the bat in our RAD map. And this is a lot closer to the intended experience that we have. So you can see we load up RAD map. Our KML data was loaded in. We still have that same cool effect of that balloon popping up with all this extra information. And we have a very easy to read and easy to look at heat map showing population of the United States. I hope you've seen how quickly and easily we can use KML data within our RAD map instances. And I hope you stay tuned for more videos showcasing the more features and functionality of what RAD map for the RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF has to offer.